if you're learning Russian, you've seen this before. It seems like the entire universe is conspiring to get you to believe that Russian is one of the most difficult languages on the planet. And this is a huge problem, not because Russian isn't hard, but because focusing on the hard things at the wrong time will make it less likely you'll ever become fluent. But Chimu? Well, Russian has its difficult parts, but you don't need to focus on all of them all the time, especially not in the beginning. Гораздо лучше перестать беспокоиться о том, насколько тяжело. Then start with the easy stuff in the beginning and gradually one by one add the more complicated parts when you're at the point when your speech needs them. That's why in this video, I want to share with you the five things I struggled with most and how I approach them so that now I'm fluent in Russian. Я рекомендую вам смотреть до конца видео, потому что ошибки здесь могут стоить вам много времени и усилий или даже заставить человека вообще бросить русский язык. Давайте начнем. Listen to the following phrase. Я дома. I'm at home. Remember дома. Now listen to this sentence. Я вижу дома. I see houses. First we had дома, at home, and then we had дома, houses. One spelling, two different words, depending on where you place the stress. And this is horrible because you cannot predict the stresses most of the time. They're pretty much random. And it gets even more fun in longer sentences. Listen to this sentence. Сможете ли вы угадать, где все ударения должны быть в этом предложении? If you listen to me say it, you get it. But now imagine trying to say it yourself while just reading the sentence without stress marks. I know the correct stresses mostly because I've been learning Russian for a while. But it's all been a matter of exposure and memorization. My two tips. The more you listen to correctly spoken Russian, the more your brain automatically gets where each stress should be. So watch series, movies, play video games, listen to Russian audio courses or music, and try talking to native speakers if you have the opportunity. Second tip. Когда вы читаете что-то на русском, читайте со знаками ударений. Either find good books or courses that already do this for you, or if you're reading something online, use a stress mark website or browser extension. Just search for Russian at stress marks and you'll find a couple of options. All right, what do the following three words in Russian have in common? Secret, surprise, diavol. Got it? Well, the answer was easy, right? Secret, secret, surprise, surprise. Devil, devil. These words are super easy to learn because they're pretty much the same in Russian as in English. That's great, right? So what's the problem? Well, last time I checked, I could only find about 750 useful words like this. And that's a start. But it's not as much as English has in common with closer languages, such as Spanish, German, French, or Dutch, or any Romance or Germanic language. This means that you must pay extra attention to learning new Russian words. I recommend using audio courses and flashcards for this. If you combine those with watching series and listening to native speakers, you will easily learn plenty of useful vocabulary. Now, pay attention to this sentence. Мой отец купил дом. Now compare мой отец with the following sentence. Это дом моего отца. What happened to мой отец? He turned into моего отца. And each Russian adjective and noun can be put in six different cases. Nominative, accusative, prepositional, genitive, dative, and instrumental. Which is approximately the order I recommend you learn them. Learning these six cases causes a ton of time, effort, and tears. So why does Russian do this to us? Well, Russian has a flexible word order, so we need cases to show the function of a word in a sentence. Just like English has, he sees her and she sees him. She becomes her if it's the object of the sentence and he becomes him. But in Russian, you can say her, he sees or she, him sees. So the advantage of cases is that you can be more free in your expression. But the downside is that all these endings, you have to learn them. And this is arguably the most frustrating part of Russian. Why? 
Well, because you need to learn six different endings for each noun. And you have to understand when to use which ending. And English used to have four cases too, but mostly stopped using them, except for some of the pronouns we just saw. But the Russian does this for all words with six different endings. And that's just horrible. But the good news is that native speakers will understand you perfectly fine if you mess them up. Just like you would understand a foreigner who says, he sees she, she sees he. Sure, it's not the most beautiful English, but you get it. In Russian, it sounds a bit less barbaric though, because even native speakers occasionally make mistakes with the cases. So learning Russian cases will help you sound more eloquent. And you have to learn them at some point. Just don't worry about them too much in the beginning. There are simply more important things to focus on, such as vocabulary and getting a general feeling for the language. My advice to learn the cases, use a structured approach. There are so many moving components with six cases, adjectives, word stems, animate, inanimate nouns, that it's best to take each case one by one. A good course, class, tutor, or grammar book is what I found works best. That's because these are created by people who have put thought and effort into creating a systematic approach to learning them. So it will save you a lot of time compared to trying to learn the cases just by yourself. All right. Do you hear the difference between sir and sir? Yes? Good job. Now you repeat them. Sir, sir. Big chance they both sounded the same. Most people learning Russian struggle with the U, and it's not the only thing pronunciation-wise that's difficult. Take a letter like the SH, the two soundless letters, TURDY and MYAKKIZNAK, or the annoying part where an unstressed O turns into an A. You read MOLOKO, but you say MALAKO. Thank you, Russian. That makes a lot of sense. Now, pronunciation is frustrating because Russian has new sounds and uncommon sounds. And let's not forget the consonant clusters where you've got three or four consonants after each other. Здравствуйте. On top of that, there's a general sort of Russian accent and mouth movement that's tough to catch. My advice, do not worry about pronunciation in the beginning stages. If you speak clearly and slowly, people will understand what you mean even if your pronunciation isn't ideal. Now, by all means, learn the correct pronunciation of the alphabet. Do exercises. Work on pronouncing the letters you find difficult. But realize that in the beginning, it's more important to say something than it is to say it with a perfect accent. Get yourself to a conversational level in Russian first and then start systematically upgrading your pronunciation skills. How do you say, I am cooking in Russian? Я готовлю. And how can you say, I will cook? That can be, я буду готовить, or я приготовлю. Я буду готовить is more like, I will be cooking, and я приготовлю is like, I will have cooked. In English, you just say cook or cooked and modify the verbs before. In Russian, each verb has two ways of saying it. Готовить is the imperfective aspect and приготовить is the perfective aspect. Now, most of the time you add a random preposition to an imperfective verb to turn it into a perfective verb. Делать becomes сделать, смотреть becomes посмотреть, ехать becomes поехать, but sometimes you change the ending. Отправлять becomes отправить or you make it shorter. Заказывать becomes заказать. Or do you change the entire verb? Покупать becomes купить. Makes sense, right? Now, there are some guidelines, but most of it is arbitrary, and you'll just need to learn it. So each English verb turns into two verbs in Russian, and you have to learn these by heart. My solution, do not pay attention to this in the beginning stages. If you make a mistake here, people will understand. It's like saying in English, I was buying groceries versus I have bought groceries. Both make it very clear that you got groceries. And the context usually makes it clear when and how often you got them. But later, once you reach a conversational level, make sure to learn each verb pair together. I recommend flashcards. So when you learn, for example, смотреть, it has a little note added to it that says that посмотреть is a verb pair. Я надеюсь, что вам помогут эти советы в этом видео. 
the key to success in Russian is staying consistent. But that can be difficult with work, friends, sports, family, and general life obligations. So if you want a simple strategy to upgrade your Russian skills, even if you're busy, watch this video next.